Okay, for those of you just joining us, this meeting is being recorded. Um, okay, welcome to a public meeting for Imagine Girdwood, um, which is your Girdwood area plan. Okay, my name is Holly Spoke Torres. I'm a Anchorage based consultant. I have a very small public engagement planning and landscape architecture firm. Many of you know me, but I see lots of new names here tonight too. We're gonna um, we're gonna run this meeting a little differently than we have been running past meetings, just because there's so many of you. Um, normally, we'd go through and give introductions, but because there's so many people here today, um, we're not going to do that. We're just going to start moving through the content. The first part of the meeting will go through um, kind of meeting etiquette. Um, meeting rules, what you can expect for this meeting. Um, and we're gonna test a couple of things because we are gonna do a little bit of participation tonight. So at the front end, we're gonna test that and show you how to do it so that when we actually get to that part of the presentation, um, you're comfortable with using the tools that Zoom has for us to use, okay? So you all are like experts already, keeping your microphone muted, thank you for doing that. Um, Actually, I've, I've said, please keep your camera turned off. Um, it helps with the speed of the meeting. If for any reason um, you're, you do any talking this evening, um, you can turn your camera on at that point. It's fun to see people. So I'm not strict about it, right? I just, um, I don't know, it's fun to see faces, but it helps with the speed of the meeting. Um, we have a ton of content to get through tonight. Um, you will have the opportunity to provide comments and ask questions using the tools that Zoom has at specific times during the presentation, okay? So, and I'll let you know when that is. Um, we're gonna try to limit um, verbal participation. I'm gonna have you use the chat box, um, but you know, there might be a time where we do participate verbally, but because there's so many of us, I feel like um, equity is important for participation. So get used to using your chat box, which comes directly to me and build, will be recorded as part of the meeting record, okay? Um, if you need something during the meeting, you can send a chat to me. I'll be, ch I'll be checking the chat periodically. I'm gonna be running a lot here, right? There's lots of you, there's, a, there's the presentation, um, but I'll be checking the chat periodically. Again, it's being recorded. Okay, so this is the first thing we're going to do. First thing we're going to do tonight is we're going to test some polling. Um, we're going to use the polling feature that Zoom has to um, ask some questions of you and have you participate a little bit, okay? So here is the first poll. This is our test question. And I want you all to respond. The first thing you might wonder is, Hey, I kind of want to see what's under that. I can't see it anymore. Um, if you're on a desktop, you can drag the poll out of the way so that you can see what's underneath it, okay? If you're on a mobile device, if you're on a mobile device, you can exit out of the poll to see what's on the screen, and then you can go back to the poll and answer it. So if you exit out of the poll, fear not, you can still participate in the poll. So 31 out of 58 of you have answered. Keep them coming, keep the answers coming. Okay. Is anyone having difficulty utilizing the poll? If so, send me a chat or you can say it out loud and we'll help you find it. I just wanna make sure Everybody knows how to participate. Okay. All right. Okay, so now, I'm just, now I get to show you what the results are. 51 of you voted, and it seems like people's favorite cheese is cheddar, okay? Or maybe not. Maybe it's just because it's the first one on the list. Anyway, okay. 
Oh, share results. There you go. 51 of you voted. 13 of you think cheddar is your favorite. Okay. See, I got to work out my little. Um... Okay. That's the first tool we're going to use tonight. Another tool we're going to use tonight, and this might be a little bit more challenging for us to figure out, but just get have patience. We'll get through it. A lot of you know how to use it already. Um, I'd like for you to use your annotation tools. And for those of you on a desktop, at the very top of your screen, there should be just next to you, so your, it says you're viewing Holly Spoltor's screen. And then there should be a drop down menu to the right that has you, gives you the ability to pick annotate. Okay. Yeah, there we go. If you're on a mobile device, you can click your screen and a little um, pencil should show up and you should be able to draw on your screen. Okay. There's two tools we're going to, there's two tools we're going to be able to, there's two tools that I would like you to use tonight. Um, the first is, is if you're on a desktop, if you see the stamp tool, there's a stamp tool. Um, there's a heart, there's a star, there's an X, there's a check mark, check mark. Um, we're going to use the heart tool tonight a lot. Well, I hope. I'm going to use the X tool tonight. Maybe things you don't like so much. Um, those of you on mobile devices, you don't, I don't believe you have the heart and the check. You don't have the stamp tool, but you, you do have the ability to draw. And when you like or dislike something, you can either draw a check mark or an X to indicate that you like or that you don't like something. Okay. It's kind of fun. I mean, if you're nerdy like me. And then I have the ability to save this. So we'll save these that we create as we go on. Um, and I also have the ability to clear them <laughs> before it's all gone, okay? So, right, mobile doesn't have stamps. Any other issues with that? Anybody else need help figuring out how to use that? Okay. All right, friends, thank you for going through all that. Okay, stop with the annotation. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> all right, moving on. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Okay. Oh, you people. <laughs> all right, so now I'm going to pass this off to um, Amanda Sassy, who is a member of the executive committee of Imagine Girdwood. And um, she's going to start, she's going to um, talk, talk about a couple slides here. So go ahead, Amanda. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you, Holly. Um, okay, so what is the Girdwood Area Plan? Uh, it is a planning document for the community and provides guidance for what the community wants to move into the future. The municipality and other entities use it to determine land use, zoning, future development, and preservation. In other communities, this document is sometimes called a comprehensive plan. Next slide, please. And why do we need a new plan? So the current plan was written between 1993 and 1994 and was adopted by the municipality and assembly in 1995. That was just after the Hotel Elieska opened, Google didn't exist and cell phones were the size of bricks. So it's been a long time and a lot has changed since then, including Girdwood as a community and its priorities. We were able to accomplish some of the 95 plan and some of it was rejected by the community since it had been written. An updated plan will help ensure local policies reflect the quality of life we value in Girdwood. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. We do have other members of the executive committee here too. And as we get into the, um, the presentation, 
they might help me answer questions or as needed. All right, and we'll introduce them as it comes up. Okay, one more of these slides. So why are there so many plans, right? There's a lot of plans happening in your community right now. Um, and I think it's important to understand the context of these planning documents. So Amanda already indicated that sometimes this other communities refer to this as a Girdwood as a comprehensive plan, right? Um, so a Girdwood, the comprehensive plan gives overall policy direction. That's what that is. Okay. And that's what your Girdwood area plan is. This Girdwood area plan will be a policy document. It will also have a land use plan and a land use plan map that's associated with it. Okay. Um, Barbara, I'm going to have you hold your annotation tools until I ask you to do that, please. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So within um, comprehensive plans, they have things which are called um, elements of a comprehensive plan. And elements of a comprehensive plan are things which you'll hear people refer to as functional plans or area specific plans. So for example, the Girdwood Trails plan is a functional plan. And when that plan goes through its process, it will be an element of the Girdwood area plan, okay? An area specific plan would be something like the Girdwood South Townsite Area Master Plan. And then it's, you have all these plans and you have to figure out how to implement them. So Anchorage Municipal Code, Title 21, land, um, Title 21, land use zoning maps, those are the things that implement your plans. Um, so Title 21, Chapter 9, which is the Girdwood chapter, is your implementation. That's how you implement all these plans that you have. Additionally, um, capital improvement projects that you implement in your community are implementation items of your plans. Okay. Okay. So where are we in this plan? Um, about two years ago now, you um, launched a community survey back in 2019. What we learned from that community survey fed into the open house that you had in April of 2019, where we did continued more community visioning. Um, we took the results of that community survey and we basically asked you more questions to make sure we didn't miss anything. Um, the re results of that um, community open house then started leading into overarching vision, goals, and policies, which is where we are today. That's what we're gonna to present to you today, our vision, goals, and policies. Um, after that, um, we'll, we'll move into actually writing the plan, um, developing the plan, and then implementation is 2021 20 and beyond. So you're right here, almost to the middle. Ideally, you review and evaluate your, and update your plan every 20, every 10 years so that, um, you know, you don't have a plan that was developed when somebody was six, like Amanda. So anyway, that's where you are in the process right now. Okay, just to reiterate again, um, this was your community meeting. From that community meeting, we made sure, we tested the survey results to define four focus areas that seem to be rising to the top as things that are important to you in Girdwood right now, which are economic development, housing, recreation and natural space, and transportation. Those are the four things that have risen to the top. So over the last 18 months, this committee, the Imagine Girdwood Committee, and a lot of you have participated, um, have worked on developing a vision statement, goals, and policies for each of these four focus areas, okay? So um, what I, so what I, here, here's a disclaimer. There is a lot of content here. 
And we're going to do our best over the next hour and 40 minutes to get through all of this content. Um, comprehensive planning is really important. It defines the goals and the visions um, and the policy, overarching policy statements for your community. Um, it's heavy though. It's it's a lot of um, it's a lot of content. So normally we'd be in a room with each other talking about this, having conversations verbally, right? Um, we'd be in small groups talking about what all these things mean. So instead, um, and this isn't ideal, but instead we've worked to organize the information in a way where. Um, I will present each of the four focus areas to you. And then at the end of each focus area, we will have an opportunity to, um, we'll ask you what you think using the tools we've already talked about, um, both the polling and the an annotation tools. And then at the end, we'll use a chat box. So as we're going, um, I'm not gonna open it up for comment or questions or conversation as I present the four focus areas because we need to get through all of them. Um, and, the, and again, the disclaimer, there's a lot of information here. So my advice to you is to take notes um, and have joy that you can be in your own home with your feet kicked up and you're not sitting in an auditorium listening to me, right? You can be as comfortable as you want in your own home. So with that, we're gonna dive into the four focus areas. Again, use the, the chat box if you have anything you need to communicate with me during, all right? Okay, we're gonna dive in. Economic development is first. Um, again, keep notes. This is our first one we'll get through. So the first thing we'll do is I'll go through the vision here. Then I'm gonna go through all the goals and the policy statements, which are a lot. Um, and then at the end, I will review the vision statement again and ask you a question specifically about the vision statement. I think it's important for you to think about these statements in the context of the vision statement before I ask you what you think about this vision statement, okay? So I'm gonna dive in. Economic development, first thing that's important, vision. Increase economic opportunities for people to live work and play in Girdwood. Girdwood's environment drives its economy. Development must be sustainable and sensitive to the current and changing environment. Girdwood aspires to be a low environmental impact community. Okay, keep that in mind as we um, go through the rest. We're gonna go through the goals and the policies for each goal. And for economic development, we have six, okay? I'm gonna do my best to get through these. Goal one for economic development is economic diversification and sustainability. Increase commercial office space, excuse me, increase commercial space, office and retail. Provide space for light industrial. Girdwood is business friendly. Girdwood has opportunities for entrepreneurs and innovators. Girdwood increases opportunities for cottage craft. And for those of you who might not know, cottage craft is basically um, arts based home businesses. Okay, that's goal one economic diversification and sustainability. And these will all come up again, okay? And this information will be accessible to you afterwards. So don't, don't feel like it's gone forever. Goal two. Economic development in Girdwood is compatible with the natural environment. First policy, economic development initiatives will minimize the impact on Girdwood's natural environment. Conservation is a form of development. For example, the protection of valuable, wild, natural open space can be a contributor to the local economy. New and existing development is connected to the trail and active transportation system. Um, and active transportation, for those of you who might not know, is when you use your own body to get yourself places, bikes, walking, that sort of thing. Okay, that's goal two. Goal three, development that is sensitive to and enhances the natural environment. All roads and parking lots don't have to be paved. 
green infrastructure. Commercial development design guidelines reflect the characteristics of the community. So that's goal three. It's about development and how it looks in your community. Goal four, Girdwood is a climate resilient community. Girdwood develops a climate action plan. Encourage industry or commerce that reflects the changing climate. Enhance existing and build new infrastructures to support future climate norms. Okay, so goal four is about climate. Goal five, Girdwood decreases its carbon footprint. Girdwood develops programs and incentives to increase efficiency, decrease energy use, and promotes renewable energy sources. Girdwood works with utilities to develop sustainability programs and incentives, including a recycling program. So two policies under goal five. Goal six, Girdwood maintains and enhances our community character and sense of place. First policy, encourage development and design guidelines that maintain and enhance the natural character and small town feel of Girdwood. Encourage the preservation of Girdwood's historical and cultural resources by utilizing federal and state historic preservation tax incentive programs, creating new incentive programs where appropriate and participating in the local landmark program. So that's about your cultural resource, the cultural and historic resources in Girdwood. Um, I do have, I have one question that I'll answer right now from the chat. Um, someone asked about definitions for some of the terms that we're using like um, cottage craft or green infrastructure. And yes, that is something that will be provided as a list of definitions. And that'll, that'll end up in the plan. So thank you for that question. That's a great question. Support knowledge and preservation of Gurdjieff's unique historical and cultural resources through community driven and led interpretation projects. Okay, encourage and streamline events and festivals. Girdwood has a variety of indoor and outdoor community gathering spaces. Okay, so you'll, you'll see all those again. And um, I don't want you to nitpick the words. I mostly wanna get your initial reaction on what you're seeing today. Remember today mostly is about informing you about the, the progress that's happening and informing you about the vision and goals and policy statements so that you can in, continue to engage at a higher level as the plan develops, okay? So the first question, economic development. I'm gonna say it again, increase economic opportunities for people to live, work and play in Girdwood. Girdwood's environment drives its economy. Development must be sustainable and sensitive to the current and changing environment. Girdwood aspires to be a low environmental impact community. Okay. So my first, uh, this is gonna be the first poll. Um, okay. Does this vision align with your vision for economic development in Girdwood? Okay. Keep it coming. I'll ask you to annotate in one second. Okay. Okay, 15 of you haven't voted yet. Maybe you're still thinking. I'm going to do about a minute per poll. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. About, not all of you voted or provided responses, but about 54 of you have said, or 82%, I've said, yes, this vision aligns with your vision for economic development in Girdwood. About 12 of you, um, about 12 of you have said, kind of. Um, okay. We're going to move on to the next. Now get your annotation tools ready. Okay. This is a lot. This is like a lot, a lot. But what I want you to do here is I want to get your annotation tools ready. And I want, um, I want to start seeing what you think. Hearts, X's, what do you like? What do you maybe not like so much? Using hearts and X's. Um, if like I said, if you're on a mobile device, you can use, you can draw hearts and X's. Okay. Okay. Anything you might not like, you can use X's. I just want to get a sense for if there's something that is like not fitting with people for any reason. Okay. Okay. Yeah, see, this is the interesting, this is where we start to see where there may or may not be conflict points. <clears throat> And again, keep in mind, this isn't science. This is like, yep. All right, give you a couple more seconds and then I'll save it and then we'll move on. Okay, so now I want you to get your chat box ready. After we've had the time to think through economic development, I've had a couple of comments, right? And I'm not gonna be able to talk about all of them, but a couple of comments were, hey, can we reorganize these goals? There's things that I think I care about more than the other things. And you know, the answer is yes, that's, that's something that can happen. Right now, um, none of these are prioritized in any way. You should know that. Um, but when we get to implementation, we're absolutely going to need to prioritize because there's not the time or the energy or the money to do everything all the time. But right now, there's a lot on the list. Okay. Second thing, second comment I've gotten so far is um, um, uh, some uh, a participant wants to see a more aggressive um, stance on climate change. Um, as a community, the economic opportunities are reliant on the climate and the conditions. And so um, that would be something someone else cares about. So I guess my question is, um, and this is what I would like to see in the chat box from everyone, is maybe, is there anything that you think is missing from this? Something that you thought, hey, why didn't they think of this? And don't go ahead and send it. Um, I'll bring up a couple of things so that everybody hears what's coming through. Um, I have a comment here about utilizing existing infrastructure to provide um, more commercial office space. So instead of provided using raw land, maybe we reutilize existing. Um, for the person who can't draw on your screen, um, do you have a mobile device? If you tap, you can get the, um, I'm gonna say this one more time. If you have a mobile device, you can tap on your screen, a little pencil will show up and then you can get your annotation tools that way. Okay. 
Um, another thing that potentially is missing um, education and child care could be under another topic. That's a great thing to bring up later if you don't see it. Um, okay. All right, keep these comments coming because these comments will be directly recorded. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next topic area. All right, moving on. Housing, second topic, okay? Vision, the range of housing options in Girdwood allows residents the opportunity to live and work in Girdwood. The cost of housing in Girdwood balances employment and income distribution. Housing and economic development are the two beefiest goals, okay? Just remember that as we get through these. Goal one, maximize the use of existing housing inventory to meet housing needs in Girdwood. Policy, develop strategies and best practices to maximize the use of existing Girdwood housing inventory to address the housing needs in Girdwood. Support the short-term rental housing market in Girdwood while minimizing its impact to the community through appropriate regulations. Encourage long-term rentals by providing incentives such as using tax incentives or exemptions for property owners. Fourth one, encourage property renovations that increase density to a duplex or triplex through regulatory changes, tax, or financial incentives. Okay, so that was the first goal focused on maximizing the use of existing housing inventory, okay? Goal two, this one has two screens. Housing was a big deal. Encourage a broad range of new housing development in Girdwood that is consistent with Girdwood's community character, natural character, and is consistent with Girdwood's housing vision and needs. Girdwood encourages mixed use residential developments. All residential zoning in Girdwood allows for duplex and triplex developments with multifamily housing, which would be more than triplex, allowed in targeted areas. Accessory dwelling units, ADUs, are encouraged where appropriate. And I'm thinking everybody might know what that is, but if you don't, that would be like a what people tend to refer to as a mother-in-law apartment, or um, I know the definitions aren't necessarily one-to-one -one all the time, but that's what you should think of when you hear AD, ADUs or accessory dwelling units. Same goal. Explore and encourage non-conventional residential alternatives for meeting the diversity of housing demands, tiny homes, alternative construction, or RV parks. Encourage and explore alternatives for more affordable housing, such as, but not limited to, single family housing and detached development. For example, small lot community land trusts or unit lot subdivisions. Pursue opportunities to fund infrastructure improvements to reduce overall housing development costs, such as water, sewer, or public roads. Okay, we know housing in Girdwood is expensive and it's ex expensive to build. So that's what this is about is pursuing opportunities to fund that in a uh, more creative way than typical private development. Okay, this is a new goal, goal three, develop additional capacity for housing development in Girdwood. So what that means is support efforts to create additional funding for housing or, or develop bridge or financing gaps. Collaborate with other communities and organizations to provide these opportunities. Examples are a housing trust, a community land trust, a mezzanine fund, tax increment financing, and non-conventional loan programs. FYI, the housing section is the most technical se section, I would say, of these goals and policies.
Girdwood creates a housing coalition comprised of public, nonprofit, and private sector, and the private sector to advocate for solutions for housing development. Market Girdwood to community-oriented housing developers that can bring creative financing options to address housing affordability and build housing that reflects Girdwood's community character. Partner with HLB to meet Girdwood's housing and community needs. Goal four, this is also a two, oh no, this is just one. Girdwood collects and analyzes housing data to better support community planning and development. This is action informing, not a requirement for new housing development. Mm -hmm. So that parenthetical statement is just so that as um, housing is planned or to be developed in Girdwood that um, we're not adding additional requirements of developers um, in forms of data. So that's what that means. This is action informing, not a requirement for new housing development. Girdwood develops a process to collect and publish regular market data. We're learning, or you know, um, and we know that it's as a part of the municipality of Anchorage, you're unique. You, It's not it it's doesn't tell the story to have Girdwood aggregated within the entire data set of the municipality. So um, this is about having data that is appropriate for Girdwood. Develop a housing strategy and needs assessment. Develop performance measures for housing to track progress and market adjustments. Develop an appropriate property tax incentive program to implement in Girdwood. Okay. Okay. So that was housing. I understand housing is a little more technical than other things. Maybe it's just more technical for me, who knows. But um, again, we're gonna do another poll here. Vision. The range of housing option in Girdwood allows residents the opportunity to live and work in Girdwood. The cost of housing in Girdwood balances employment and income distribution. Okay. So we're gonna do another poll and it's gonna be housing and it's gonna be the same. Does this vision align with your vision for housing in Girdwood? Hey, you're getting faster at this. Keep it coming though. There's still some of you that need to. Give you about 20 more seconds. I'll say it again. The range of housing options in Girdwood allows residents the opportunity to live and work in Girdwood. The cost of housing in Girdwood balances employment and income distribution. Last call. Okay, um, I'm gonna clarify this. It's a good question. The question is, I'm not sure I understand exactly what the second sentence is saying. So the cost of housing in Girdwood balances employment and income distribution. So I'm gonna take a stab at this and then ask Mike if there's, cause I, I think this is important. Um, so the idea of that second sentence is to say, it, yeah, is to say that, um, the people, the people who live and work in Girdwood should be able to afford the homes that are available in Girdwood. So, and I'll let you weigh in, Mike, please, because you have good words for this. Yeah, it might be better to say reflects employment and balance income distribution rather than balances. We, we had some discussion about that word, but it's pretty much what you said. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then one more point of clarification. Um, polling right now is just for the vision statements. Um, the annotation is intended to just be a fun way to give um, input on the goals and policy statements. Um, those go goals and policy statements will continue to be refined and detailed. So there'll be a ton more 
um, we're just we're just trying to get um, high level ballpark feedback on where those um, goal and policy statements are right now. Okay. Ooh, we got another vote in. Remind you of anything? Okay. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna share the results. Does this vision align with your vision for housing in Girdwood? Uh, 29 of you said yes. 34 of you said kind of. And six of you said no. So I guess I'm gonna ask a follow-up question. Um, those of you had said no, if you wanna tap and type in the chat box why you said no. Um, if you feel comfortable, you don't have to, um, but it would help us understand why that doesn't resonate with you. Um, same thing for the people who said kind of. Um, if this, if it kind of does, kind of doesn't, we maybe want to understand a little bit more why. And um, you can type it in the chat box if you, okay, perfect, keep it coming. All right, we're gonna move on. Okay. So remember, I have the goals here highlighted so it's easier for you to see. Now I want you to dive into the annotation tools, okay? And I can see in the chat box that are th there are things that resonated and things that didn't. So um, again, use your hearts, your X's, your lines. Let us know what you want, like, what maybe didn't resonate with you so much. Give you a few, like maybe a minute more. It's a lot to get through. Okay. Okay. Feels awkward on my end, but I, because I feel like I'm giving you too much time, but I don't think I am. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Chat box, always there, remember that. Oh, okay, I'll give you a little bit more time. Okay, I'm gonna save this now and we're gonna move on. Okay, <laughs> you had to squeak one more in there, huh? Okay. 
Okay. Recreation and natural space. Okay. Vision. Recreation and natural spaces are a cornerstone of life in Girdwood. Local parkland, natural spaces, trails, commercially developed recreation, indoor facilities are all critical elements of a robust community recreation system. Our driveways are our trailheads and our backyards are gateways to natural spaces. Okay, goal one. Ah! Sorry, guys. Goal one. Ugh. The Girdwood Recreation System is balanced. There are a range of year-round experiences for community-supported activities. One, ensure that parks, trails, and natural spaces and outdoor recreation facilities meet community needs. The quantity of outdoor recreation assets meets both Girdwood's community goals and level of service guidelines for a community the size of Girdwood. Two, maintain existing outdoor park facilities for safety and long-term durability. There are very limited, there are very limited motorized uses allowed within the recreation and natural space system. The Girdwood Recreation and Natural Space System is easy and convenient for everyone to experience during everyday life. Goal two, Girdwood has an indoor and covered recreation, <laughs> Girdwood has indoor and covered recreation facilities. Identify locations. Public-private partnerships are recommended to leverage funding and other resources. So that one's pretty simple but also very hard. Goal three, Girdwood has a formal, established, maintained, and protected system of trails and natural spaces. Identify areas that are primarily recreation and natural space areas and manage them as such. Transfer management authority of heritage land bank parcels that would be better managed by Girdwood Parks and Recreation. Two, Identify and protect trails and trail access via easements. Three, support implementation of Girdwood trails and natural spaces plans. Goal four, Girdwood's trails and natural spaces are integrated into the community. Girdwood explores public-private partnerships to market and support our trails and natural spaces system. Trail town, move toward a trail town designation. And that's something that will need to be defined. New development, for example, housing, transportation, is consistent with ensuring access and protection of trails and natural spaces. Support use of trails for active transportation within the community. Okay. Um, so we're gonna talk about the vision first. Okay, so the question I'm gonna ask is about the vision only. And I'm gonna pull up vision. Recreation and natural spaces are a cornerstone of life in Girdwood. Local parkland, natural spaces, trails, commercially developed recreation, indoor facilities are all critical elements of a robust community recreation system. Our driveways are our trailheads and our backyards are gateways to natural spaces. Okay. Recreation and natural space. Um, does this vision align with your vision for recreation and natural spaces in Girdwood? So, um, well, we'll get through this first. Okay, any last responses? Okay. 
So 83% of respondents said yes, which was 52 of you. Um, 10 or 16%, 10 of you or 16% said kind of, and one of you, 2%, say no. So if you care to share um, and you want to give a little bit more information about why this doesn't resonate with you or why it kind of does, um, you can please share in the chat box. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna move on to our annotation exercise. And let me clear this first. Okay, same thing. Um, use your annotation tools um, to give a little bit more information about what resonates and maybe what doesn't resonate so much. And I'm going to ask a member of the committee, someone asked about what is a tr what does trail town designation mean? And um, does someone on the committee have a little bit more detailed information about what that is? Mike, do you have it? I have some information, but I think Jessica uh, may be actually a very good person to speak to that. If you don't Jessica, mind me, Jessica, if you don't mind me nominating you. Jessica, can you give a one sentence, um, if you can, on what the trail town designation is and what sure, the benefits absolutely. are? Yeah, um, so trail towns is a concept used by organizations throughout the country along long trails. So like the Appalachian Trail, Continental Divide and PCT. So being a town near the Iditarod National Historic Trail, it would mean that we would promote the fact that the town itself is ripe for visitors, residents um, to promote the fact that they're along a, a trail and that that's an asset that we um, acknowledge and, and promote. Okay, thank you. In a short sense. Yeah, and in my experience, those sorts of designations turn into opportunities for funding. Um, okay, all right, keep it coming. Oh, you figured out the text. Nice work. Okay, I'll give you about 30 more seconds. Thank you for adding to the chat box. This helps with um, analyzing, understanding what a broader cross-section thinks. So thank you. All right, I'm gonna click save in like 30 seconds at the most. Okay, I'm gonna click save in three, two, one. Okay. <sighs> nice work. Okay, moving on. We've got one more. Transportation. Vision. Remember, we'll come back to this. All modes of transportation, including human powered, are considered equally and Girdwood is a walkable community. First goal. Girdwood has a connected system of trails and walkways. A car is not required to live here. Every new and existing subdivision is connected to the active transportation network. Improve multimodal access within the Alyaska Basin subdivision. Okay, so that's goal one. Goal two. Support a year-round regular and reliable transit between Girdwood and Anchorage. 
One, explore public-private partnerships to provide transit service. That's it. Goal three, parking in Girdwood complements our community and does not encourage unnecessary driving. There is a viable park and ride lot. Parking is right-sized for our community. Okay, those two policies under the parking goal. Four, ensure that Girdwood's transportation infrastructure is resilient if, em if emergency evacuation is necessary. One, create a transportation plan for Girdwood that identifies weak points in current infrastructure. Okay, so that's one major policy under goal four. Goal five, maintain the Girdwood Airport as a valuable community asset. Support development at the Girdwood Airport that recognizes the community, sense of place, and natural environment. Goal six, encourage the integration of the Alaska Railroad Girdwood Depot into the local transportation network. Advocate for Girdwood as a continued stop. Explore opportunities for the train to become a more affordable and feasible public transportation option for locals. Pursue the train depot as a location for a transportation hub. Okay. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing again. Again, first, this is about this statement, the vision. I'm gonna launch a poll. Okay, does this vision align with your vision for transportation in Girdwood? Okay, keep the comments coming in the chat. These are important. I understand it's difficult for everyone to not see the chat, but you, you will get to see the results of it. Okay. All right, I'm gonna end the polling in three, two, one. Okay. Um, 47 of you or 75% say yes, this does align with your vision. 15 of you or 24% say kind of, and one person says no, this doesn't align. Okay. So again, um, if you have more details to share on why you chose what you chose, please put it in the chat. Okay. All right. Now the fun part with your annotation tools. Get your annotation tools ready. <clears throat> Hearts, X's. Um, for all six goals, let us know a little bit more about what you think. Okay. 
someone has a question about what is multimodal. Um, multimodal means all modes of transportation, foot, bikes, cars, trains, transit. That's what that means. More trailhead parking. Okay. Come on, people, we're at seventy eight. Might get to a hundred yet. Okay. So I have a question, and this is important for this topic area specifically. Um, there are other plans like someone's bringing up on the screen, which is the statewide transportation plan. There's also the commercial areas and transportation plan for Girdwood specifically. And if you remember the diagram I showed at the beginning, which kind of showed the hierarchy of plans. Um, the Girdwood area plan here um, would be overarching. So the overarching policies identified in the commercial areas and transportation plan um, would be, this would take greater priority over the commercial areas and transportation plan. So we're gonna look, we'll look at that plan and analyze it and figure out what, what elements in that plan um, are consistent with these transportation goals. So um, this, that will be part of the analysis and planning process that's important in addition to the statewide transportation plan and the municipal um, transportation plan. Okay. All right, so we've gotten through all of the topic areas now and I'm gonna hit save. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit save in three, two, one. Okay. Okay, so we've gotten through all the topic areas. And I understand it was a lot. And um, this isn't over. This is the first time you're seeing this, right? So, I want you to understand that, that there's a lot here, there's a lot to digest. So in addition to everything you've seen, um, this website here, I'm gonna show you how to do it now. Um, so this is the first thing you can do next. We developed a website that includes all of this information that you've just seen. And it also includes um, surveys and a place for you to fill out information in more detail if you want. Um, if you feel like you've invested the time that you want to invest, that's fine. But if you feel like you want to review this information in more detail, there is a way for you to do that. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So this is a little bit hard, right? If you don't, you can also go to imaginegirdwood.org and get to the website as well. So there's imaginegirdwood.org and there's this website here. So I'm gonna show it to you. Welcome to my desktop, everyone. Okay. We'll start at the, this is your imaginegirdwood.org website. Imaginegirdwood.org. You can get to this, what we're calling a virtual public meeting, a self-guided community workshop, okay? All the information is here. We'll go to it now.
Ach. I hope that link works. Okay. Use this link right now. Make sure you have this link and I'll email it out. It's on the website. Okay. Self-guided community workshop. Project history tells you how to participate, explore the four focus area, take the surveys, asks you a couple of questions on the front end, okay, just so that we can have some information about how you're answering things, okay? Um, I'll put a link in the chat in one second so that everybody can get to it. Um, that seems to be the best. I'm gonna make the chat public so that, um, oh, actually I don't need to, okay. So there's four focus areas and you can click on the four focus areas here. I'm gonna click on the housing. This is exactly all the information that we just went through. And it tells you how to do it here. Scroll through and learn more about this focus areas, vision, goals, and policies. Take the short quiz at the end to give feedback. Okay. So look familiar. Here's all the stuff we just did. At the very end, it asks you similar questions. Again, this isn't science. It's okay for you to take this again. Um, and here's your opportunity. You have a thousand characters to tell us more if you want to tell us more. Because honestly, you've told me a lot here in the chat box, but I think, I think this is information that sometimes you need to digest a little bit. So there's an opportunity for you to tell us more on the specific focus areas in this chat box, okay? So then you're like, okay, I'm done. How do I get back to the other focus areas? So the other focus areas are here at the top. You don't need to do them in order. So then you can go to recreation and natural space. Okay, you can, you can do the same things here. Okay. So then after you've participated, if you want, again, you don't have to, but this is a way for you to give us more information if you want. Um, after you've completed all four, you can go back to the Imagine Girdwood homepage from the top. There's a little bit more information. And then here's something that's important, and we're going to do this in the chat box as well. So that, you know, there's multiple ways for you to participate. Did we miss anything glaring? I guess that's, that's the question we want to ask you now. What did we miss? Now that you've had a chance to review and digest all the materials, is there anything you feel is missing? Is there an important issue not represented? And you can tell us that here. But also I'd like to ask you that information in the chat box. If there's something that's on your mind right now, yes, um, thank you. That was the information I was gonna bring up. Education and childcare. Um, that is something that um, comes up frequently about something that maybe we haven't addressed yet. So if that's important to you, let us know. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put this link in the chat box right now. I believe I can send it to all of you. Everyone in meeting, right. There you go. There's the link to participate here. Also, it's, it, it's good to be able to remember what we've said about all these things here. So here are all the visions, goals, and policy statements written out again for you to refer to if you need. Okay. So at this point, I think we have two options. we can open it up for questions and I can field them along with the committee. Um, Mike, is that something you'd like to do at this point? Happy to. Okay. Um, but keep coming, keep the things that you think are missing um, into the chat box. That's important for us to know. Let, okay. One more thing, let, before we open it up for questions, let me just get through these last slides. Okay. And it does that. Thank you. Okay. So 
this committee that I keep referring to um, meets monthly. And there's a lot of very detailed discussion that happens at committee level. Um, if you care to engage and watch the agendas, if you care to engage in things that are more important to you. Um, so the next meeting is Wednesday, November 25th at 6 p.m. We know that's the evening before Thanksgiving, but nobody seems to be going anywhere. So we're gonna meet. Okay. Um, last thing is a sign up to receive email updates. That's how you'll get information about future committee meetings. That's how you'll get information about how the plan develops in the future. Um, so go to imaginegirdwood.org and sign up for those emails. There's lots of ways for you to sign up to the, for the emails, okay? Okay. All right, I think at this point I'd like so the website that I just showed you is live now. Your next steps are to go there if you choose and um, fill that out. But with that, everybody know how to use their raise hand feature? Raise your hand. Um, if you have a question you'd like to ask, let me get mine. Um, why don't you raise your hand and we'll, we'll start that. And if you don't, that's okay too. Holly, can you review how people can go down to the participants box at the bottom to get into, into that? Yeah, so um, if you see, look for your participants icon. Yep, and click that. And there will be a feature there at the bottom once that little box opens that says raise hand. And if you do that, um, I'll get you in the queue and we can start a discussion. Um, Christopher, go ahead, you have your hand up. Um, and you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, Chris Erstock, um, since we are the northernmost rainforest, um, I've been rather concerned about this recent housing development that just went ahead and clear cut their lot. Is that the future of Girdwood? Uh, outside developers coming in and just willy nilly doing whatever the hell they want down here, clear cutting, uh, clearing out our trees. Are we going to have big housing developments or is there going to be, um, you know, size, are they going to be size restricted, uh, or will there be, uh, I think there should be covenants in place uh, on these uh, developments. Uh, so things like this don't happen. Yeah. Um, I am trying to find. So the idea with economic development in Girdwood is compatible with the natural environment. Um, there are a few goal statements in here that have um, set the stage to indicate that Girdwood's design guidelines and development code should be different than maybe what it is now or what it is in Anchorage. So that if details like that are important for this committee to understand what you want your community to look like in the future. Um, so I think what I've heard a lot of through this process is that um, you value your natural environment um, you, and you value design guidelines that enhance the natural environment. So I think based on what I'm hearing that um, the goal of, the goal of what, I, what I've heard so far is that um, a shift to those sort of development standards would be appropriate in Girdwood. So maybe retain more vegetation. So I guess as a follow-up, what I would ask is that as you have ideas for how those things should be implemented, can somebody remind me where the, where's the design guideline um, goal? I'm trying to come up with it specific one. Uh, 
um, somebody will think of it. But as you think of ideas that implement these goals, um, please bring up those details like retain existing vegetation, those sorts of things. Chris, I, I'll, I'll just address the, your question quickly. You said, is the um, is that clear cut on um, gunny sex bro? What we want in the future? No, we do not. We don't want it now. Um, and this actually shows a weakness in the way the code's implemented at the moment, that although that developer um, said a lot of things and made a lot of promises, there's nothing actually in current code that forces them to follow those promises. Um, so we want to fix things like that. I agree. We've had this, this discussion before and yep. we need to discuss and maybe get it written into code so this doesn't happen again. So one of the things, just for context, one of the things that it, when we're trying to make changes to code now, the first question always is, does this meet the plan? Does this follow the, the principles of the um, of the area plan we have in place now and often it doesn't because I think 25 years ago the focus was much more on development and growth um, and I don't think that's quite where we are now so by replacing the plan with a new version um, we can we can sort of indicate that we want sort of more sustainable and more sympathetic growth more sympathetic developments and then make sure the code reflects that. Mm -hmm. Yeah and so I just want to sorry it took me so long to think about where it was but here in Economic Development Goal 6, Policy 1, encourage development and design guidelines that maintain and enhance the natural character in small town feel of Girdwood. Um, as people have ideas like this, we're interested in knowing them, like retain existing vegetation, that's where that might go. So anyway, that, that's the mechanics of how input is most helpful for us. Um, okay, sorry I said so many words. Um, Becky, go ahead, you have your hand up. Yes, I'm wondering where in the plan might incorporate improvement of existing infrastructure. Um, so I have a question, do you, are you talking about housing infrastructure or commercial infrastructure or both or public infrastructure? Pub, I guess it would be public infrastructure, um, such as our wastewater system, I know has been at capacity or near capacity for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also am wondering, I, I, maybe just, maybe, I don't know, I don't think it's just me, but just kind of curious about um, freshwater lines um, south of Crow Creek Road on this side of town that have never really, that have never been installed, but um, I guess they were put in in other areas that we're looking at as that HLB was looking at for future development, but this area of town never had any put in. So uh, how, how could that be incorporated possibly in future plans? Where would that fall under? Um, so this plan, I'm happy to hear you bring up utilities. This plan should absolutely deal with utilities and we can um, we can figure out how to add that. Um, AWU is somebody we need to collaborate with for data purposes. So, um, and then the other detailed item, Mike, I don't have an answer for, do you? Uh, the, the issue about infrastructure is partly covered in the housing section, um, but only partly. Mm -hmm. I don't remember which policy I'm afraid. Okay, well, I guess that would be my comment or I'd like to see that somehow included about utilities in the, in the plan. So that, um, yeah, like, like Did, things aren't, you know, I guess this area that was behind the school that was developed or the water line put in there with the intention of in the future date putting in housing when water lines are not, were not put in for existing homes. So, yeah just like to see some kind of a plan or uh, an idea or something incorporated into this that would address it. That's a really yeah. good point. So policy 2.6 on this page is talking about new development and reducing the cost of infrastructure, but you're right, there's, there's need to improve infrastructure and the existing infrastructure or lack of it, like water, like um, city water on the um, west side of uh, Glacier Creek. Right, right. Are there any other areas other than other than water? 
not that come to mind for me right now. Maybe other people, but so it was that, and then the waste, our wastewater system. I don't, and I don't yeah, know yeah. what the plan is for that, but it's yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Becky, very much. Yeah. Okay, um, we're gonna go to James next. Go ahead, James. You know, I'm I'm just wondering. I, I kind of re reiterate the uh, the comment about clear cutting. And I mean, if you're gonna take down a tree, I think you should put up a tree. That's what the rainforest is. So how, how about maintaining a little bit of the ecosystem like we wanna do up there? Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for that comment. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Really? <laughs> okay. Um, I guess, Mike, I didn't, I'm going to put you on the spot, I think. Um, I Thank guess, you, Holly. <laughs> I guess I would like to just ask if you have any closing thoughts, um, kind of like wrap it up a little bit, because you've been um, active in the committee, so. Yeah, okay, well, first of all, thank you very much indeed for everyone who's turned up for this. There's a lot of information here. I'm just looking at this full page of text and that's less than a quarter of it. Um, so thanks very much for uh, for your input so far. Um, and I encourage everyone to um, to go to the sort of the review website we put together and um, you know look at that in your leisure and think more about it. And particularly anything you think we've missed um, we paid a lot of attention to the to the things we've been discussing, um, but you know there's there's some almost certainly some blind spots. And I, again, the comments we had already, I appreciate. We should have definitely looked at existing infrastructure. Uh, Childcare education is a very important area, and there are probably two or three others. Um, so this is kind of probably the most important thing, in my opinion, that's happening in Goodwood at the moment. Um, the well, apart from everyone's health. Um, but the, you know, getting this plan lined up and sort of setting up our future for the next uh, decade or two, I think is critical. Um, and uh, it gives us the opportunity to, you know, direct other things that are happening, other plans, uh, changes to code, improvements to ways we can focus, but we can have better economic development here, have a wider variety of um, economic op opportunities and jobs and things like that. And everything kind of comes from this plan. So it's important to get this right. And the more community buy-in, the more people help in this, the better the plan will be. So again, I encourage everyone to, uh, you know, put any time in you can and uh, and help us make get this right for uh, Girdwood. And the other thing is, I have uh, the the Imagine Girdwood um, website is now updated, so it points the to the right um, to the virtual uh, meeting as well, the virtual information. Um, okay, Christopher, you have your hand up again. Go ahead. And you might be talking, but you might be on mute. Okay, there you are. There I am. Sorry, sorry to be such a bother, but uh, I just want to address the uh, Airbnbs in this town. Um, I'm just wondering if there, you know, we have some problem areas, and the uh, it's uh, they're obviously owned by outside interests that don't seem to care for anything other than lining their pockets. They don't care about the people that are in their homes that are racing up and down the streets, drunk at all hours of the night and uh, keeping all the residents awake and on, on guard. I'm just wondering if, uh, if uh, there is a movement in the Skirtwood area plan to limit the amount of Airbnbs or VRBOs maybe on a per capita basis. You know, how many people live here and how many people, how many of these can be rented out? I mean, is there any thought about that or something there's, to that effect? I'll answer that, Chris. There's actually work going on independently of the uh, area plan, um, but it will be, you know, the area plan addresses this as well. It'll make it easier to, to do this work in the future. So, um, you know, we're aware there's 
there's plenty of issues um, around uh, Airbnbs. At the same time, it's kind of an important economic driver because there are plenty of people who do live here and uh, have part of their house or, um, you know, they have a cabin somewhere uh, they rent out and supplement their income. So it's kind of an important economic driver at the same time. My personal feeling um, is that so limiting by limiting by number isn't a very effective solution, and uh, I think that's that can be borne out by other communities across the U.S. Um, but at the moment, we have absolutely no regulation whatsoever on it. So you know, you, there's no there's no need to have anyone to respond to complaints or anything like this. The only the only regulation at the moment is that you're supposed to pay taxes, uh, room tax, and nothing beyond that. So there's clearly space for. Um, a few things that would benefit the community, like uh, having a, you know, having a local contact. So there's a way of getting, of you know, res- getting complaints and getting people to respond to complaints when they're actually happening, not months afterwards. Um, there's some questions about capacity. There are some places which are, are um, I think there's there's one fairly close to me which has I think two bedrooms plus a pull-out sofa and advertises I think ten or twelve people. Um, so there's things like that where clearly there, there's an attempt to sort of, you know, stuff lots of people into into uh, a smaller property. So there are things like that that we can work on. We can we do that in the short term as well. We don't have to wait for the area plan, but it's something that is addressed in the uh, in the policies and goals of the area plan. And that makes it easier to sort of pursue this in the future if, because the area plan has to be supported by the community. So if the community is behind it, it's easier to make uh, changes. But we don't want I don't think driving it, driving it away is a good idea or even limiting it dramatically is a good idea. Can I make a comment? Um, I'm, is it specific to this topic, James? Yeah. yeah, if so, and then we'll get to you, Nathan. Go ahead, James. Anyway, I, I am one of those people that, that has a primary VRBO, and I'm more concerned about the local residents than I am about the people coming in. So whatever it takes, I'm, 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 I'll change rules or whatever it is. I do not want to disturb my neighborhood. Okay. Thank you. And I think there are plenty of examples of people who do this really well, um, both people who are resident in the community and rent out properties and do it very well, and people who are, you know, live in Anchorage or elsewhere and do a good job of it. Uh, we don't want to discourage that. We want to encourage that, but we want to find, we want to basically make it, more difficult for people who don't do a good job of managing uh, Airbnbs, and I'm sympathetic to the idea of limiting it. Personally, my my I think the you know my opinion is that hasn't been very successful elsewhere. It's caused too much of a backlash, but uh, we'll have to find some path to go through that here. So, just to um, close this discussion, Christopher. Um, here's this goal one policy to support the short-term rental housing market in Girdwood while minimizing its impacts to the community through appropriate regulations. How we implement that policy are the details of what we're talking now. So if you have ideas, those are, that's where you should, um, that's where you should provide ideas and through that policy. Okay, thank you. Um, Go ahead, Nathan. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for, uh, first of all, thanks for all the work that you guys have put into this. Uh, I think that's great that the community is coming together. I have a couple things. Um, first of all, uh, the clear cut on uh, Sprout. If any of you haven't seen it, I would encourage you to drive by. And uh, it would kind of probably drive home a lot of points of this, of getting the community to actually be able to be involved in this process, which I think on that case, it uh, was not inv- well, it was not at all. I mean, I live across the street from that place, and uh, I think we were largely ignored by the municipality. So, um, that being said, um, and I realize that that uh, is uh, under the housing topic, but the area plan it's it's very heavy on housing, and uh, I personally I think that an indoor recreational center, uh, especially for kids. Um, and like my dream is to have a public pool here and a public uh, a gym access and a multi-use room uh, for you know our future generations uh, and to raise families here. That would be a, a pretty key essential thing. And I'd like to see a little bit more emphasis uh, put on that with the area plan. But uh, that being said, I think uh, it's been a ton of work and I think it's awesome that everybody's participating. So that's all I have, thanks. Thanks so much, Nathan. 
Okay. Um, any other comments at this point? Um, I think you've seen me talk about a couple of examples where I know you like, that's what happens with planning, right? We have these overarching policies, but um, specific ideas and really good specific ideas tend to come from you all. So as you go through these goals and policies and you think to yourself, I would do this, um, that's the kind of detailed information that we want is your ideas on how to potentially implement some of these things. So in addition to what they say now, um, if you have input about the future implementation, we want to hear that. Okay, um, I'm going to go to Jean or Jeannie. It's Jean. Uh, thank you, Holly. Um, just a quick question on how long do we have again to get this input back to for people who might not have been online, but we knew what, wanted to be here for them to take the survey and then again to get comments in, please. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'm not sure we've talked about this, but I would say, um, how does everybody feel about three weeks? Is that too much time? Um, you can give me a thumbs up. What do you think, Mike? Two weeks, three weeks? Do you care? I'd say that the, we're gonna we're gonna discuss this at the next meeting. So anything that comes in between now and I think the twenty fifth, we'll be discussing on the twenty fifth. We're gonna leave the site open for a while. Yeah. So, I mean, oh. especially the areas like implementation, those ideas can come in over the next couple of months. Yeah. So. Here's the committee is going to discuss the results of this public meeting and anything we have on the 25th. But um, I would say officially, if you can get everything in in one month, um, that would be helpful. So that would be one, two, like December 8th. Okay, and I'll make sure the website is updated to reflect that. Um, Amanda, you have your hand up, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to let people know that they should really tell their friends about this. Um, we wanna hear from everybody. The more people that are getting us input, the better this plan's gonna be. So give people the link, tell them they got a couple weeks, and then we'll be discussing it. But yeah, keep the ideas coming. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna guess there's two people on every Zoom link here. So that's probably like 150, 176. Go ahead, yeah. Anna. So I came kind of late. Is there a way to post a link to this on Facebook so more people can to the survey on Facebook? Yep, we can absolutely do that. We'll get to that tomorrow. Or Amanda can do it right now. <laughs> okay. Um, you have access to the website and all the resources. We'll update the website with the comment deadline. And um, other than that, I really thank everyone for your time and participation tonight. It was really great to have you all participate. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. Thank you. Thanks for putting all this together, Holly. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks Holly. Holly. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Holly.